these are the what we're calling paper flowers. They're just circles of tissue paper which I've smeared paper clay on, it's dried, and then what I've been doing is putting on the back tissue paper which I have then been painting over with a PVA glue so it's got this lovely translucency to it but a little bit too big so what I do at this stage is just very roughly tear it around the edge so that it, it goes more, more in line with the, the roughness of what I'm trying to create which is a sort of impression of a flower really like that and then I'm using a, a liquid acrylic gesso and what I'm going to do is just thickly paint on quite thickly so that it actually leaves I'll show you in a sec um, quite a trail of paint there then it's going to be left to dry and when it's dry I've got an old paintbrush which I'm going to dip into the resin and paint over. I've also got a lot of these ready now which I'm also going to dip into the resin and paint over possibly two or three times we'll have to see. The trick is not to get it in the end bits because we don't want the resin which is also glue to stick it to the wood. Um, I did have a trick which was to put all the kebab sticks onto plastic drinking straws but I don't think they'd fit on the end actually of these um, so that's the sort of a technique to revise so after that what I'm also going to do is um, just develop these a little more with this parography thingy you can take that off actually because it is not necessary that can go off and that's why I'm sitting by the open door because it will burn nicely all away around the edge wherever you happen to want it so the idea is to get the marks into the <laughs> be careful not to burn your fingers it's coming on really very nicely indeed. It's all about suggestion and not about actually being very um, single-minded and labouring hard to create something which looks exactly like a flower. <laughs> Never seen a flower look like this anyway. And you can also just, because they're going to be coated in resin, poke little holes in too from the front or from the back because the back also can have marks made and when they overlay each other and they're stuck down onto the milligum oh it's not called milligum is it? it's called milliput I think they're going to look really Okay, and if they don't, well, I'll just scrap the idea and try something else, but I'm 99% sure it's all going to be fine. So the back's like that and the front's like that and what I can also do is just go in a little bit here and there because some of them can be just gently touched with the burning look and some can be quite intensely done this is going to be more of an intense one I think wind's getting up which is a good idea isn't it there how about that good okay I'm gonna then coat it with resin and leave it to dry overnight and maybe then I'll have to do the backside by then it'll be 
a really interesting piece to work with. Uh, what else? That's about it really. I quite like to just go into these again just to intensify them. I'm just going into the into the little holes like that and leaving it and pushing it in because it makes quite dark impressions because it's all going to be this one is all going to be about sepia and burnt which is sepia and silver and copper I think that's going to look good so I haven't done the back yet but I don't think I need to do the back because I might put some millipot on the back and then um, gild it with some I've got some uh, different colour bits of dyed aluminium sort of bronzes and coppers and silvers and golds which I can mix up and stick on the back and then coat it all with um, sepia ink and then coat it with resin again and at the same time embed the brooch back into it so I shall come back and show you what I've done okie dokie, bye